Oh, she started. We started. Yes, she started. Right. This is a cut for Friday. <laughs> Summer 2009. Question eight. <laughs> right. Yeah, what do we do? Sad, sad, sad. Differentiate everything with split text, which means we get what? Don't do parallel filming. I'm on D brackets. Alright, well let's try and write that. Yeah. We're going to differentiate that, and we're going to differentiate y squared with the split text as well. Just and Beth, what do you get if you differentiate two with respect to x? It's gone pink and yellow. It's what? <laughs> it's gone stripy. It's gone stripy. Yeah. And broken the pink camera. and yellow. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's zero. Good, thanks for that. Cool. Uh, so we've got 28 <laughs> grey normally. <laughs> how, how, do we, how do we deal with I know everybody's done this, so somebody else, how do we deal with? 7xy when you're differentiating it. You stick a y on it and then you say it's the x one. You stick dy next to it. Camilla is quietly at the front repeatedly saying product rule. Product rule, it's two things, isn't it? 7x and y. So when we differentiate it, it is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which is y, times the derivative of the first, which would be 7. Does that make sense? That's, that's 7x times what you get when you differentiate y, which must be divided by the x, plus the y times what you get when you differentiate 7x, which must be 7. Okay, how do we differentiate with respect to x, y squared? It's not a product though, is it? You differentiate it using the chain rule. You differentiate y squared with respect to y times dy by the x, because by the chain rule, the dy's cancel out and we're left with the same thing that we've got there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so there's two kind of things when you're doing implicit differentiation. There's two things you get. There's the kind of product of things, where you do them separately like that, and there's the things where you're trying to differentiate something with y in it with respect to x, which you have to differentiate with respect to y and then times dy by the x. So we've got 28x minus 7x dy by the x minus 7y plus 2y dy by the x and that was equal to not there, so it's still not there. Why is it minus 7? Oh, that's right. Because it was all on the side of the graph. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, what do we have to do next? Get all the dy's and all that. All the dy's together and all the other bits together. So we've got, what have we got? We've got dy by the x times 2y minus 7x. Okay. And if we take the other bits to the other side, we've got 7y minus 28x. And so dy by the x is 7y minus 28x over 2y minus 7x. And was that what we were supposed to get? Oh, look at that. Yeah, it was it was different. Different. Is, is it coronavirus? Is that a problem? No. Because mm -hmm. we could just take minus 1 as a common factor and to the top and bottom and write it to the x minus 7y over 7x minus 2y. Because all we've done is multiply the top and bottom by minus 1. <laughs> cool. Now, I forgot the thing to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Wow, thank you. Yeah. A bit late for what? Yeah. Beth, just film Hannah for a moment. She's got something to say. Awesome. Said I was geeky. Um, are you ready, Will? Can we go on? Right. Um, part B says, part two says, points L and M on the curve each have x coordinate 1. The tangents to the curve at L and M need to end and find the coordinates of A. Shh. Why did you say it? Why did you say it, Ben? When you film the body, it goes like stripe pink and yellow. 
How is he supposed to look like that? <laughs> Right, um, so what, what do we need to do? We need to find the coordinates of points L and M to start with, don't we? And they are, they're both where x equals 1. So what do we do next? Let's take x equals 1 into the equation. So for part 2, we're going to get, at the point where x equals 1, um, the equation was, what was it? 14x squared, so 14 minus 7xy, so minus 7 times 1 times y plus y squared equals 2. Okay. Oh, what have we got? A quadratic, which we can then try and factorise. Go factorise. Y minus 4, y minus 3. Y minus 4, y minus 3. Giving us two y values. Y plus 4. Well, that's kind of what we expected because we were told that there were two points. So we've got the two values. So we've got the point 1, 4, and we've got the point 1, 3. Now we also need to know the gradient because we're talking about straight lines at these points, tangents at these points. Do r by the x, which we already found. And our value of do r by the x, our expression for it, included x's and y's, but, but that's okay because we know what x and y are. So this is 28 times 1 minus 7 times 4 over 7 times 1 minus 2 times 4 or 0. And this one would be 28 times 1 minus 7 times 3 over 7 times 1 minus 2 times 3 which is 7 over, oh yeah, good, 7, so 7. <laughs> right, so the, <laughs> these are the two straight lines, and they meet at the point, at some other point, we've got to find where they meet. So let's find the equation to the lines. This one would be y minus y1 is m x minus x1, I don't know why I did that, y equals 4. This one, would be y minus y1 is mx minus x1, or y minus 3 is 7x minus 7, or y equals 7x minus 4. And the question is, where do they meet? So what do we do? We just chuck them all together. Chuck them all together, simultaneous equations, they meet at the point where 4 equals 7x minus 4, in other words, 7x equals 8, so x equals 7 eighths, and y equals 8 7 eighths. Good. That's on video. Well spotted. I did that mistake just to check everybody was paying attention. Okay, video. There's a... There we are. Hooray for maths. Stop. Whenever you want.